morning, Chester. See Alan Johnson, critical thinker. Good morning. Uh, just let me please uh, give you some clarification on the expenses. Uh, the expenses isn't the with the, with the current value. The expenses is for the price of the infrastructure for which they uh, keeping this stuff and generally referred to as a cold wallet. Mm-hmm. A cold wallet is basically just a an infrastructure computer or a safe for say a wallet that's not connected to the internet. Right. Uh, so essentially, that has to be a server somewhere. These are not physical uh, cash. So the company they use is going to charge them to run this server. You know, they transfer it from another server. I would assume that I would not have left it on server right. that was hacked or had access to. So whatever the data center, that's the cost they are asking to be recovered. Mm-hmm. The, the the what is called fair market value is what people is willing to pay. And this essentially is what got uh, uh, Sam Bankman freed into this problem because this FTT token was an inflated value through some uh, gymnastics of his company and and the use of it as a utility. So if I create a token and I say I want to sell it starting at $100 each and people are willing to pay $100, it is what it is. Right. But the problem with that is that I don't have any real world assets backing right. it. Right. So this, and this is what has happened, and this is what happened with FTT, token that FTX issued. There was a value assigned to it let's say, I think about $700 or whatever it was. But its value came from what FTX said its use and whatever matrix they use right. and for people to pay. So when they start using it as collateral uh, for, you give me your cash, and I almost give you this as a collateral for the cash you have while I buy other tokens and other different things. This is where the greater full theory comes in. Mm-hmm. Because no cryptocurrency has any real world assets. In fact, there's only one cryptocurrency, which is Bitcoin. The rest of them are altcoins. And they don't even need to be by standard that Bitcoin uh, be controlled by individuals, groups, whatever it is. So they, you know, like you say, the, any, the, you could speak to professionals in the industry who even run exchanges, whether it be CZ or even SBF, they'll tell you that 99.98% of the 12,000 tokens are all scam, meaning less than 100 of them are real. So 12,000 of them, I think, 50 to 100 of them has some credibility. None of them are real. But here's the problem that we had in, and, and, and any jurisdiction will have in, in, in backing tokens. If I create a, a a, 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 a magic money uh, type in environment. I create a magic money. Uh, call it Chester, Chester Ruble. Right? Mm-hmm. There is no real money involved. There's nothing to back it. Right. So then how do I then put what you call uh, uh, asset to back it? Like you say, you say you want to keep your book and keep, what's it, the balance sheet, you know, to make sure you have enough of a draw. Mm-hmm. So if you give me $100 for it, I mean, I'd have to keep the $100 in the draw because then I wouldn't even be able to cover my expenses because if you come back for your $100, since it produces nothing right. in reality, right, then what do I use to back it? Right. Absolutely nothing. This is the greater full theory. It is basically what, what other people are willing to pay. The, 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 the fool asks you. Mm-hmm. For instance, the Fiat currency is backed by the fate of the government who issues the fiat that whatever it is they will do to provide or produce, you know, it used to be by gold, silver, uh, petrol, uh, petrol dollar, all these different things. Right. And so this is the problem that we will have in saying that we want to keep uh, a, a reserve for these coins because there is no reserve because whatever you pay is what it is. Now, the problem we had in our accounting is in our governance, is that we have no rules in regards to this. We had no way to checkmate this. We had no way to maintain that the data, which is across multiple servers, um, I, 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 this could probably be dozens, if not hundreds of servers around, 
for us to know where the data is, how it's been changed, how it's been manipulated. We didn't have any means of checking how what they were doing in the back office for back doors or reading other people's data to see to play against it. Because you know, again, this is a this this is essentially a casino, and there's no rules in the in this casino to say that the house isn't reading the data and playing against me. In fact, right. the the chief the chief technology officer for FTX was accused of doing something very similar when he had a casino, a, a, a poker thing, or no, a card thing. Right. Because he just basically read the data and bet against the people because he knew what they were holding in their hands. Right. And this is the same thing that you will see as you begin to see Alamanda and others, you will see that they were reading data from FTX and other places and betting against the people whenever he needs some cash, just pump and dump and do whatever else and bet against the people, that's the very people whose money you, you are monitoring. So the question is, does the Bahamas have the resources for this? Yeah. The only way to do this is to have data legislation. And secondly, you'd have to have the servers all present in the Bahamas or have some jurisdictional control into other jurisdictions for where these servers are. And so the question is, what team are you going to put in every single CEX or, or cryptocurrency exchange that comes to the Bahamas? to sit and monitor the data on a daily basis, yeah. uh, monitor movement of wallets. I mean, there's analytic, analytical tools to see to, to do in this type of environment. And so if this is not as simple yeah. as simply putting in legislation yeah. and saying, let it be so. You know, this is not some Star Trek, let it be so. So, so let, it, me it, it, yeah, let me ask you a question, Did, um, just based on, on what you said about servers. Uh, should should a, a company like FTX be have to house their servers here um, and and allow you know like the SCB access to them whenever they want, um, or is it okay to have their servers all over the place, uh, but still no, but allow it, access? Many, sorry, the servers have to be in a jurisdiction yeah. for which the commission can reach into and execute an order. Right. whether it be an agreement or cross-border type of thing. This right. is where the data agreement comes in. Right. Because you can't call the United States or, or, or even, say, Cayman or some other place, Costa Rica or some other place, and say, uh, uh, I need that server to be disconnected from the Internet right, right. now. Right. Or call that particular data center. So wherever the company that is docile in the Bahamas has a server, the commission has to have the authority to examine the, the code and other different things that yeah. is involved in running the server. And and it has to have penalties, also criminal penalties, for certain acts and under, that can happen in the digital sphere. See, the problem that we have is that in spite of, F, of FTX digital markets being in the Bahamas, you know, they are subsidiary of the global FTX. Right. So FTX digital markets operated in and from the Bahamas, but FTX global operated from the Bahamas, but not in the Bahamas. Right. And that's where our problem is. Mm -hmm. And even in the arguments that we're now making, the legal arguments that we're making in the U.S., because you can't think of this from an analog perspective. Yeah. These are digital companies around the world now. This is exactly what it is. Even in the United States, I see many of the congressmen and senators have this whole argument from an analog perspective mm -hmm. because this is a purely digital realm in digi digitization and so we need a digitized we need legislation for digital digitization or digitized uh, digitalization which is the actual use of technology and then you need information for data which is the actual product of digitization and so and, 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 and we, need a, we need about, about 13 compendium, compendium of legislation mm -hmm. to even begin to dip our toe in the water of the new digital reality for where yeah. the world is right now. And this yeah. is just for FTX, you know. Yeah, yeah. This is for companies that actually just operate in the Bahamas, period, from a digital perspective. Yeah. And so I think we, 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 with all due respect, we were in over our head and 
right on the same Guardian radio in 2020. And again, when the Progressive Liberal Party modified it, they came into office. I said this was the equivalent of removing a fence and putting up a locked gate and declaring yourself safer. Mm-hmm. Cryptocurrency is the greater fool theory, but it's an open door to money laundering, drug dealing, terrorist financing, uh, all the things that we've been blacklisted for, we have now took down the fence and locked the gate. And I think that these, uh, uh, and because it's just an example, I don't want to run on, right, but just an example, uh, I just did a deal in Miami, and I, you know, you know, if I bring my $2 million back in the plane, they might intercept it, or you know, to the airport in the, in, the, in, the, in the trunk, they might intercept it. Well, I just have to find a means to acquire some digital currencies in the U.S., mm-hmm. right? Not even uh, uh, transfer it to another wallet, yeah. uh, change it to another crypto, change yeah. it back to another crypto, come all the way into the Bahamas. And by the time, I'll be on, let's say, I'll be on FTX. The Bahamas government will look at it and assume all uh, these, all these checks, KYC, all these things have been done, mm-hmm. which is practically impossible. Maybe, you, you know, do whatever. And then I can withdraw it and deposit it directly into account. Yeah. Because we have no means of literally identifying who these wallets are. Because I can go into a KYC on this wallet and have multiple wallets that I could put in, put out. It's just huge. This is this is huge. And 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 you know, you even go and listen to the BIS, the Bank of International Settlement. This is much bigger than what the Bahamas has demonstrated. I'm not saying we're not capable of doing it. I'm saying for the two decades I've been here observing what we've done with technology, for us to demonstrate that, that we have that capability. Remind you, we can buy expertise and then begin to train and develop behemoths to move into this new industry because cryptocurrencies may be garbage, but blockchain and associated technologies that banking and, and, and uh, decentralized finance and even centralized finance and, and property tech and all these other different things will be a multi-trillion dollar industry yeah. in exclusive cryptocurrency. So we can begin to take a look at this and look at developing the human capital to actually be the place. Let me end in saying this. The Bahamas is the only place. Three things is needed. The world is crying for this. Uh, uh, data privacy, data protection, and data sovereignty. The Bahamas is the only place in the world that the Constitution is read with a digital mind that can provide constitutional data privacy, constitutional data protection, and constitutional data sovereignty. And the way the Constitution is, it's superior to law, which could be changed on a whim. And so if you have a constitutional protection, then you know the government can't just randomly change the law to give people access to your data. That gives us an advantage of the 200 countries in the world that no one else can do it. And so literally speaking, for people who want protection in the cryptocurrency industry, if we pass those laws, they can have digital citizenship like Estonia, and then we can impose rules for any of their wallets or data that's kept on them to be dust off the mile in the Bahamas or a jurisdiction for which we have control. Yeah. And it bring literally billions of people uh, uh, to the shores of the Bahamas. Just, just, it, it just. I mean, this is we, we. I'm saying this is a lesson learned, yeah. and we have such yeah. a great opportunity to redefine not just the Bahamas from a technological standpoint, but actually influence the world. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning, caller. Welcome to Morning Blend. Yes, hey, Chester. I have two questions for you because you're in the business section of the newspaper. Yes. You need to ask the. Uh, the commission to tell us the actual assets they're holding and 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 the number of wallets mm-hmm. and the like. But I mean the actual like the the name of the tokens, how many of them, etc. Every single token. Right. And then secondly, they need to uh, tell us whether or not they have actual control of the infrastructure, the digital infrastructure for uh, FTX. Okay. Those are very two important things. So when you say that you seize the asset, right. that means that you should have access to all of the service. And, and when you say you cold storage the asset, it's incumbent upon you to reveal to us 
how many bitcoins, how much FTT, how many Selena, how many whatever it is that you're holding right. in it so that we can know relative to what they had as to what is it you have. Right. Okay. Um, when you when you you're talking about um, you mentioned um, their FT, FTX's systems. You're talking about whatever their um, whatever they run the business. Run, right. This this business didn't have the technology. Didn't necessarily was just my the Bahamas. Right. So when you say if, if you know you, you can take my office and I can walk outside and use my cell phone and still use and still run my business. So if you seize the asset and you're being asked and you're asking for the, the, the court to provide you the right to pay, continue to pay for these services, because remember now, if, you, if you're renting a server from me, if they didn't own their own data center, and you're renting a service from me, then you have to continuously pay to have, you can have use of that service. Right. And if they do have their own data center, then we should also have control that, of that yeah. data center. Yeah. And so these are questions that the exchange should answer in their yeah. allegations or, or claims that they have seized the assets, not the physical assets, because those are the things that they have. Right. But more importantly, the billions of dollars that, that FTX supposedly have is not, is not necessarily fiat and real estate. Right. They're actually digital assets. And so yeah. we need to know, did you get two coins, right? Two bitcoins, or did you get a few thousand? Did mm -hmm. you get a few... Uh, e e e uh, Ethereum coins, so or they get a few thousand, because based on what uh, 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 FTX held, it could very much be that the Bahamas may be one of the largest holders of Ethereum. Mm -hmm. And so, and yes, we need to ask this important, because even though you may have them in cold storage, you may actually move them to a more secure environment and stake those Ethereum so that you could generate revenue to increase what you have to pay back to the other people, because you're not risking you're not ri risking them by staking them as of trading them, you know, because people you process across the server and you get paid for, for, for it being a process, you know, for, for things that are processed across your stake. Yeah. And so, and so, you know, it's, it's, it's just, like you say, this, if, if someone, this is not for the topical traders. If someone doesn't understand the functioning architecture of, of cryptocurrencies or digital assets, you may not necessarily know what is it you're seeking to yeah. control of. Yeah. You you think they're um, in control of 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 um, FTX's? Um, I guess they they would have built their own software, right, to to run yeah, their Yeah, but their you exchange. could put the software. I have my own. I have various different software I use. So my software sits on Amazon right. and Dell servers. So I have to pay them on a monthly basis, quarterly basis, whatever, right. to have access to their what what is it they provide. So, but if I had my own server, I still have to pay the host yeah. uh, data center for having my computer in there. Yeah. And so, when I rent space on their server, because you could buy a fractional of a server, or I actually send my own physical computer to their data center. And so, this is why my question is, what is the infrastructure mm -hmm. that you see? Did, 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 did uh, FTX have its own server sitting in another data center? Did they have their own data center somewhere? Are they leasing shared space in a server? Yeah. Or multiple servers across multiple jurisdictions? All of these things are questions have to be yeah. answered. So the question is, how could you see something that is nowhere yet everywhere? Yeah. And so, and, and, and the only way for that to have is that in your regulation is that you dictate where these data and information can be. Yeah. Thank you. Appreciate it. Well, we are looking forward to the day that the... Um Securities Commission of the Bahamas is able to have a press conference and field questions. Uh, that would be that would be a good day. Um.